I'm Crystal, it's Tuesday the 16th of October, it's 20 past 10 in the morning. I'm at home at my flat at Lansdowne Court, the sun's out today. I didn't go out yesterday, it was misty and miserable and I didn't feel too good. So I stayed indoors all day yesterday. Um, I'm going to, going to sit down now and just talk a little bit. Um, Saturday, just gone, was a nasty day for me. Um, um, I'm taking it easy because I'm not feeling too good at the moment. So I, I, I went out to the shop Saturday morning. Then I had a call from my son, David, saying that he was going to come down to my flat with Steve with all my clothes and all my things for me to flat in through. So I was going to go to the library, I had my library books in my bag, so I had to go back home to get my belongings, my belongings that David was bringing round. On the way um, towards uh, Railway Street, near Ashley Lukin's dentist, there was a, a lad, not unsimilar to my other son, it looks like Andrew, sticking his head out of the window going, you're ugly! Looking straight at me, embarrassing me in front of loads of people. So I felt pretty shitty coming back home for Saturday. I felt not angry with my son, but I felt shitty. Um, there's people bigger than me, got things wrong with them, and there's loads of people. It's like I've got to stay inside all the time. So I get back to the flat and the lady from number two is poking her head round the door saying, uh, can you shut the windows please, I've got bronchitis. You have to keep shutting the windows upstairs where you are because, and, and, um, because apparently the lady downstairs gets cold and she needs all the windows shut in the building. It just so happens to have been a really, really hot October and when I come back from the shops I can't breathe so I like a window open so I can get some air. Um, so I've now been told to keep the windows shut. Now I've, si we, we, I've since talked to the people downstairs and, and, and explained things and um, we're okay about it. Uh, my ornaments were given back my sunflower ornament and my dragonfly ornament were given back. Apparently Gary had given them the ornaments that were on the floor downstairs from my balcony and um, he was swearing at them and being nasty to the couple downstairs. So I think I probably got a brunt of, uh, of a lot of it. Anyway, I, I thought it was all sorted out got upstairs and I, then I read the note that they'd written me. It was by a number six door, not Gail's, mine. And Gail's since opened the window this morning. Gail opened the window up here. It wasn't me. So it was me that got the note. And it says, um, I am sick and tired of shutting the windows upstairs. Um, it's costing me a fortune in electricity. If you would like to keep the windows open, you can pay my electricity bill. And of course, I read that and I, I just didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm a quiet person. I don't argue with anybody. And to get that, for just opening a window was a bit much. Anyway, like I said, I've since had a word with the people downstairs and, and said, yes, I'll keep the windows shut. I didn't realise the lady had an SOS pendant round her neck, like a St. Christopher, and I, and I didn't know she had several illnesses. So I made up with them, and this morning, Gail's opened the window, and then I mean, I'll get into trouble for that, so I've shut it. Um, it's ridiculous. Um, I think most people in these blocks of flats have got health problems. 
and I suffer with a breathing difficulty getting up the stairs so that wasn't me that opened the window this morning so I was fuming um, that called down David came round with Steve Steve stayed in his gas company van because he's a plumber and I had all my stuff obviously bar my birthday cake which they'd probably eaten and my chocolates that Joe got me um, David started crying and saying mum I don't like you living like this he was bursting into tears and saying mum you know I wish I could get you out of here it's horrible here with all the drugs and everything and he started crying and, and then he left and I haven't seen him since Saturday I haven't seen David since Saturday um, Sunday I went to my parents had a, a dinner, it was late, um, waited a long time to, to eat, um, so I stayed around there Sunday, had a meal, came back in a taxi that my dad paid for, and um, yesterday I, I felt so depressed and miserable. As I told you, a, a member of staff in Sainsbury's walked past me and whether it was meant at me or not and went, Zink is in here again. And then this lad shouting, you're ugly out the window. Um, and my ex-partner was with who I called the Dirty Andrew lookalike in my diary. Cracking up his cans together underneath my window later on last night I still I feel intimidated and still being made to stay indoors for some reason um, my ex is walking around with this dirty Andrew lookalike he's been doing that for ages he's been walking around with another man he looks like a tall version of my son Andrew with a moustache and it's me that lives in this flat. Andrew and David do not live in my flat anymore. A simple 50-year-old woman lives in this flat on her own with her two cats. I don't know why they're trying to frighten me and intimidate me at all. Anyway, onwards and upwards.